Thank you so much, Mr. Vipul Sevi, for speaking on NASCOM Initiative for Startups. He started off describing the incredible journey of NASCOM and how it has impacted many startup ecosystem. It is also pertinent to mention that under his intelligent and diligent leadership, he has accelerated, incubated, connected many giants with startups, and he is determined to get you speed up with the rest of the country. He has successfully laid out a far-sighted and progressive approach through his speech, the various steps to create that success story here with Infall Angels. So thank you so much, Mr. Vapor. Um, and now we have a very interesting session that can even turn the tide around for the, today's event from Mr. Manoj Kumar Basumathri, Basumathri, CEO and co-founder of Symbiotic Foods, to speak on how a commercial pick breeding company got VC funding. So ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Manoj Kumar Basumathri. Good afternoon. Uh, Fad said he has a stay spread and then he spoke so much that I'm thinking, what should I say? <laughs> uh, I'm a terrible public speaker and uh, I'm here just to share my stories and uh, what I have learned during this journey of four and a half years. I'm like, you know, accidental entrepreneur, you can say. <laughs> like, this uh, now accidental thing is so famous, so I'm like an accidental entrepreneur. I was a banker for 15 years. I joined as a provisionary officer in State Bank of India in 1998. Then uh, worked there for 15 years, was a chief manager. Then suddenly resigned from the job without having a really uh, idea what I would do. <laughs> Somehow I was not very clear about my life. So. Unlike Fahad, who decided in, when he was 18 to drop out from college and confident enough to make big in life, I was very middle class, you know, a lot of insecurity. So pick up the job that you get and things like that. 2013, July, I told my wife, enough is enough, you know. This banking, you know, most of the bankers are unhappy and stressed out. So same with me. I was totally stressed out and public sector bank. So I said, I'm giving up. You are working. She's also a banker. So that's the only security that I had was that she was still working. So I said, best of luck, you continue. <laughs> Let me do what I want to do. So I decided to, and I was like, I joined in Delhi Circle, worked throughout Uttarakhand, most of it in Uttarakhand and UP Delhi. Uh, then uh, I, I like was fiddling with few ideas and then this startup entrepreneurship so interesting it sounds so interesting you know I thought can I do something then we, while fiddling with few ideas one thing that was clear on my mind that I wanted to come back because since I I was away I started studied in Sunny school Gualpara then went to Delhi studied in St. Stephen's College I don't know how they selected me <laughs> but that's an another story then uh, end up joining as a bank PO, one of the largest job. <laughs> <laughs> when I left, uh, then I was feeling, oh, what do I do? Agriculture, aggregation, all those things, you know, good sounding words, aggregator, tech, this, that. So I'm taking you away from this. When we talk about startup today, most of it is technology because, of course, I think uh, technology has really enabled a lot of things and there has been companies who have come up in 10 years, 20 years, where they have reached today. 100 years, you know, the traditional companies could not reach that valuation, reach that level at, in 100 years. If you look at the top 500 companies in the world today, you would see many of those companies are very young compared to the old year. And the churn is happening very fast. So obviously, technology has played a very important role as far as the startup ecosystem is concerned. But I'm taking away from something very, you know, what should I say? Uh, unfashionable, very uh, basic, 
but something very interesting for the people of Northeast, you know. Because I was told, uh, uh, when I started my work, then I was told that, you know, many of the women in Northeast, they love their pigs more than their husbands. <laughs> so I'm, I'm working in a sector uh, which is piggery. And of course, my wife says, I don't know whether that's true or false, but my wife says that you love your pigs more than me. So for me, that's true. <laughs> Okay, now, uh, can you, oh, I have to play it, I can, I hate PowerPoints, you know, I've seen so much of them when I was in the bank. <laughs> we enter into a meeting in the morning, nine o'clock, and finish it at nine o'clock, nothing productive comes out. So I started hating PowerPoint, this is the first time I'm giving a PowerPoint presentation because Prisha told me that, you know, make a PPT. <laughs> I was like, you know, a pig farmer making a PowerPoint presentation, <laughs> trying to figure out what to insert where and how. And uh, I made something, I don't know how interesting it would be. But uh, I put some ideas, My what I learned in the last four and a half years, five years of my journey as an entrepreneur. I put those and I would narrate my story with that, you know. It would be more, uh, those things you can read out yourself, I'll not read them. I'll tell my story uh, related to that. Uh, sorry, it's not moving. Oh, I'm holding it opposite. See, I told you. Ha! <laughs> huh, Startup Summit uh, in Paul Angels. It's really, uh, I think it's a great initiative that Impulse has uh, started and this is a private initiative that that's what interests me so much and that's why I came you know I sent my wife yesterday along to Bombay and came here to Nepal <laughs> because uh, I was told there's a chapter uh, they have started very recently and it's a private initiative because I always thought that we need this kind of initiative more in our region uh, I'm really excited to be here now when you want to do something, what you need is an idea, basically. So, uh, I think it's basically three things. Idea is what, what you want to do or what exactly you are trying to do. How, how is the execution part of what you are doing? And then why, why is the, why you are doing it, the meaning. So I think why is really, really very important. An idea can be, today, you know, you can get idea from anywhere, in, you know. There's internet, there are magazines, there are so many people doing so many interesting things. You can pick up any idea and see whether you are interested in that. You can also get an idea seeing problems in the society. Basically, as many speakers uh, in the previous sessions have told that entrepreneur tries to solve a problem. So if you see a problem, then you can Try to find a solution, that is how you get an idea to do something. And once you have an idea, then you have to figure out how you want to do it. Like my case, as I said, I'm an uh, accidental entrepreneur. I don't have a clear idea what I want to do. I just knew that I want to come back, do something related to agriculture, do something related to rural areas. Even the idea, like, don't figure out what kind of idea is it. Huh? Can it be called even an idea? We have been raising pigs for generations. Hmm? Every woman in our uh, rural areas have one or two pigs. So leaving a bank job as a chief manager and coming and going back to my village, you know, that also going back to my roots and starting a piggery farm was one of the most difficult uh, thing. Uh, not for me, my parents. <laughs> uh, because you know, they had to face that music, you know. Everybody asking, hey, we heard that your son has resigned from the bank. Has he done some hair ferry? <laughs> First question, fraud kya hoga kus? Nikal bank, no? Uh, so, like, no, he just resigned, he wanted to do something. Kya kar rahe? What is he doing? Ah, he started a pig farm. <laughs> My mom used to, like, I came, uh, came to know about it later. My mom used to cry, literally cry, but because, you know, I'm a little bit adamant since my childhood. 
So uh, she doesn't do it in front of me. Uh, that's how we got started. I put some pictures, you can see how we started. Very basic, very minimal. So that was an idea, I think one of the largest ideas that I'm working in. But when I, see, I studied, I used to eat pork, but though I'm a border, I didn't know anything about pig. How pig is raised, how, like, I didn't know anything. I'm not a veterinarian, I'm not even a science graduate, let me tell you. But today I know, I can claim that I know much more about pigs than a veterinary doctor is. And more than that, we know how to make business out of that, which is also very important. So that is why today we are considered to be one of the authority in the sector. And of course, uh, there are other things that has happened which has helped us to acquire that knowledge, that uh, you know, skill, which I'll share as we uh, uh, progress. So uh, this idea, actually, our co-founder, uh, one of my school junior, he was the guy who actually threw this idea on me. He said, Manujda, we have done a uh, project on contract farming with this uh, NGO called Pradhan. He's a uh, social sector guy uh, in Pig. Why don't you look at Piggery? I said, what happened? He said, we miserably failed. <laughs> Brilliant idea. You failed, are you a, you know, you were my well-wisher or you want to really, you know, screw me or you kind of, you want me to be like this, unemployed, uh, from earning something more than a lakh a month, secure job, a software-driven uh, car, AC room, and then I'm sitting at home and you were telling me to do something which you could not really, uh, you know, figure out. Uh, yeah, but I think that's an interesting thing. Uh, somehow, I don't know, that stayed with me and I started looking at the sector and then I realized, yes, Piggery plays such an important role in the women of Northeast, especially the rural women and the tribal women. And it's like an insurance for them. They raise a pig, that's the only earning that a tribal woman has who she can claim to be hers. Other agriculture income generally belongs to the man folks, you know, but the pig that she sells, is hers, you know? So that's very important. Then, be it, you know, education of their daughter or son or a marriage or a medical emergency, they use it like an insurance. So bank, being a banker, I, I could understand uh, what an insurance means for a woman. So I thought, yeah, it really plays a very important role. Then. As I was looking at the sector, then I realized that nothing much has happened. We are still at a very primitive stage in the sector. And commercialization of piggery has not happened. Whereas if you look across the globe, like piggery sector in Europe, I have studied, done some studies in European piggery sector. In fact, I have gone there and visited many farms. And I have personally gone and worked in a farm there for some days. So I know how the sector has developed. Today in Spain, I'm told that, you know, uh, the piggery sector in Spain contributes around 7.5 billion euro in their GDP, you know. Then I was trying to calculate what could be the, you know, uh, the piggery sector uh, value, volume of transaction of the Northeast. Somewhere I got to know that, you know, we consume somewhere around 4 lakh metric ton of pork meat in the Northeast annually. And our production is somewhere around uh, you know, 1.3 lakh metric ton. So 1.7 lakh metric ton is coming from outside. Even if you give that 4 lakh metric ton, if you give a number of, say, 200 rupees per kg, you know, it is 8,000 crore business, just a meat transaction part. And there are other parts, you know, feed, piglet, medicine, and so many other things. So I thought, you know, it's a big market, you know. As a banker, I could, you know, add up those numbers and then thought that, yeah, there is some potential and then uh, why not? Then we started and that's how I got that idea. I'm telling you, the idea has not really as much importance. You can get your idea from anywhere, anywhere. It can come from anywhere and it need not be original, let me tell you. Flip card, it's not an original idea. There's so many other things. People are copy-pasting. What the value of an idea depends on what is your execution power? How well you can convert that idea into reality? 
how well you can connect those dots. That's where the whole uh, success of an entrepreneur depends. Can you read them? I don't think you can read them. Anyway, once you have an idea, what do we do? Once you have an idea, you, you try to run a pilot. You try to run, you know, uh, design a product or, you know, uh, you, you run it in a smaller unit and try to validate your idea. So you all have to do that. As an entrepreneur, you can't put everything, all the money, all the resources, without really testing the market, without really knowing whether your you know, idea will work or not work. Somehow, you know, we are very emotional about our ideas. We are really, really emotional about our ideas. We don't really like to hear from others that this idea will not work. But you as an entrepreneur cannot decide whether your idea will work or not. It is the people for whom you have created that product or service will decide whether your idea will work or not, okay? So piloting is very important, and we had run a pilot. When what we did was, we started the bidding farm with 25 uh, gills. Gills are those, you know, uh, young females. We bought from local markets and we started breeding them. I'll show you some pictures where we really started with bamboo, you know, boundaries and very basic infrastructure. Uh, so that's how we piloted. We have worked with some women uh, uh, farmers where we gave them four piglets to raise, things like that. Now, <laughs> funding, yeah. One of the most trickiest things. Uh, of course, fa for fun it's easy, you know. It's very <laughs> yeah, but uh, let me tell you, for the bigger ones it's really easy, you know. I have been a banker. Mm -hmm. uh, bank gives money to people who don't need them, first thing. Let me share my experience. When we started this in 2014, uh, I had some saving and my friend also, he also put an equal amount of money and we were almost, you know, and these pigs, you know, we didn't know. As I said, I was not a veterinarian, so we are learning on the job and there was a heavy cost. Whatever we are feeding them was turning into what? Dung? Whether we get results or no, no results, whatever we are, we are just feeding them money actually. We are not getting results but we are feeding them money and they were converting them into dung. <laughs> and I didn't ha have a biogas, you know, here also to put so that I can produce some biogas from there. It was like that. And that time, I went to my bank, State Bank of India. <laughs> I put my 15 years there. Uh, my wife was still working in the bank. <laughs> she got a foreign posting and was in Belgium that time. I know a lot of people in the bank. I went to a branch and told them, you know, we have started this breeding farm and we want a small loan of 10 lakhs rupees. We don't understand commercial piggery. One guy, he said, okay, I'll look at it. And, you know, honestly speaking, I could not convince a banker to give me 10 lakhs rupees for the thing that I started, being a banker for 15 years. So I'm not very hopeful whether <laughs> that lady was asking that question, can I get a loan from the bank nearby? I'm not really, really uh, uh, yeah about it. But the good part is that today there are alternate you know, options. Like as Fad was mentioning, simply loan, right? And there are so many other platforms that were they were ready to give you loans. And then what happened was, so I, networking is very important. And that way, I think those people who uh, are dreaming of becoming an entrepreneur, I think this is the right platform. Be connected with them. Because networking helps. I was connected to one of the organizations from Netherlands who were basically earlier funding uh, NGOs and other organizations. And since we're creating a lot of impact on the ground, though ours is, uh, that time we were, in fact, we were not even, somebody asked this question, what entity we should form? We were running that initial two years, we were running it as a partnership. We were not even registered as a LLP or a company or anything. 
it only when we got our first investment, we were asked to convert it into a company, and then we made it a private limited company. So they connected me to that organization called ECO, and uh, I met one of the fund manager. Then we talked about the year. Thankfully, they are from Netherlands, and they understood commercial piggery. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, finally, the discussions uh, started around mid-2016, uh, and we could closed around in around 2000, uh, end 2016. Uh, uh, we, we got our first round of funding, which came as a foreign direct investment. There are challenges again on that. First thing, e for eco also, sustainable business concept was new. I still remember we are sitting in Utrecht railway station in a cafe finalizing uh, the multiples, you know, but you will say you are crazy, man. <laughs> Do you know anything about multiples? I don't know, actually. But I still tried to bug in, and those people were also new, and they also suggested something, and I pushed them hard, no, this is not, no, it's not acceptable. And we finalized our kind of the terms and conditions uh, sitting in a cafe on top of Utrecht railway station in Netherlands. So the first one was concluded like that. Then, uh, of course, uh, now we, have, we are raising a second round from Nixon is your uh, net fee. Uh, we are raising uh, that for expanding our facilities. And but now banks are calling me. Come, come, come. We'll give you in crores. <laughs> they're ready to give me in crores. Honestly speaking, banker. There are so many bankers who have come, visited my farm, and looked at it, and they're saying, "Please submit a proposal. Three crores. We'll get it done in a in a week. We'll get it done in a week." So. As an, yeah, I think you have to create that, uh, yeah. you know, you should, first you have to believe what you are doing and you have to take it forward whether you get funding or no funding, it doesn't really matter, should not really matter, you should have the plan to uh, keep taking it forward. And more than that, today I have an MOU signed, <laughs> irony of the things is that I have an MOU signed with State Bank of India <laughs> for funding the contract farmers who will enter into contract farming with us. They're ready to give loan to them today. Okay. Three years back, when I could not raise 10 lakh rupees from the same bank is coming to me saying that we'll fund those farmers who are associated with you. So I think we have traveled quite a distance in those three years. Okay. Uh, next. Oh, oh. <laughs> Wait, that yeah, is with me, yeah? Where did I keep it? Yeah, sorry. I told you, I'm a farmer. <laughs> of course, I mentioned, like, education is really important. Like, with us, what happened was, we, as I said, I pay, we paid a heavy cost learning on the job. And it's a livestock. Uh, unlike technology, you know, best part about technology starts up that you can create it in your bedroom, you know? You have an idea, you're good at software, you know how to write a program, you have some idea, you can really create it low cost in your bedroom. But we are in a sector, we need some infrastructure, we need to you know, invest in the capital investment is there. And apart from that, we need a lot of working capital. Because those animals need feed. So we need to have money to feed them and try to get uh, results that uh, uh, we are supposed to hear. Otherwise, livestock, you know, we are basically a commercial breeder. So commercial breeder, we basically produce piglets and sell it to the farmers. Uh, Northeast has around 6.5 uh, million pigs as per the last census, 19 livestock census 2012. But, you know, unfortunately, we like so much, that's around 60% of the India's pig population. But our contribution in production side is only 25%. The average slaughter weight of a pig in Northeast is 30 kg. The national average is 70. And the international average is 84. So this is a really long way to travel. And what, as I said, my, luckily, I don't know, Saru Khan ka ek sa dialogue hai, jab aap kus karne chaate ho, mlab saare, my wife brought a posting to Belgium. She applied without asking me. Then I had to go with her and six months I was house husband. 
cooking food, washing clothes, taking the kids to the school, doing nothing. And we just started, that was in September 2014, and we started this in June 2014, we put around four or five lakhs rupees. I had every opportunity to leave this and join a, you know, something there and pick up a job because being a banker experience, I could easily would have earned, if not, maybe around two and a half thousand, three thousand euro, which is still a good money as an Indian because everything else was provided by the bank to my wife. But then after staying there for six months and I was shooting mails blindly, you know, the fit companies there, the breeders there, these, that, whomever I could, yeah. And luckily what happened, one company called Fancom, who provides this, uh, you know, uh, the fans, temperature regulatory fans in Netherlands responded to me. They, they invited me to visit their company. And when I went to meet them, they also took me to a farm where they were uh, supplying their equipment. That was a thousand sow unit. Just imagine one thousand sow. Sow means female pigs, uh, the, the pigs who skips uh, piglets. One thousand sow in one uh, building, and they produce 35,000 piglets a year. Only five people working there. <laughs> and, you know, that was an eye opener for me. That was the aha moment. I thought, before that, I was doubting myself whether I was doing something right or wrong, or I was just passing my time with this idea called piggery and all those things. I had, of course, there were many times where we had our own self doubt. It will happen. Every entrepreneur goes through that journey. Ups and downs would be there. There are many times when you start doubting yourself, you know, when you don't get those desired results. So, we also had our own doubts, what we are doing, whether it's right or wrong. But after I visited that farm, I said, wow, yeah, it can be done. So after that, of course, today I have a very good network in Europe, and I have been visiting them. I have uh, talked to a fit company. Uh, two things, I have two stories that I'd just like to hear and not take much time. I'm, I'm sure I'm taking too much of time. We are running short of time. Uh, with, uh, that, that visit made a lot of difference. Then another visit I made was to a feed company in Netherlands. So uh, the plant manager, I asked him, how many types of feed you have? He said, we have 62 recipes. He used the term recipes, 62 recipes. I said, what? <laughs> I'm talking about the pigs. In, yeah. Uh, yeah, we custom made, make it for different farmers. Then what he does is, he picks up a little bit of feed and asks me to taste. <laughs> what kind of pig feed? And he expects me to taste the pig feed, man. Probably he understood my body language, then he took it himself and ate it. And that was for the piglets, you know. After seeing him, okay, I also took a little bit and tasted and it tasted like amul powder. So, the, when we talk about pigs in India, what we generally uh, feel is, you know, that those dirty, scavenging, fake eating, all kinds of things. And of course, today, in Northeast, the demand supply mismatch is so much, we do not know what kind of pigs are coming from UP, Bihar, West Bengal, and even Haryana, a vegetarian, Rajasthan. They are rearing pigs to sell it to Northeast. You know, I feel this is an opportunity that we are letting it go by. We have been, there is no table. Over there in UP and Bihar, who does pigs? Only the scheduled caste community. Poorest of the poor, others fund them and they do it. And most of them are fed with municipality waste, hotel waste, things like that. So what we are eating today, I generally don't eat. Yesterday they took me somewhere and I had to eat. I generally don't eat pig outside, pork meat outside. You know? Uh, only yesterday in Imphal I ate outside. And I knew this is from outside because seeing this, you know, the pet size, I could tell this is, this is not from here. So there's so much of potential that's, that's there in the sector and we are working to connect these dots and create an ecosystem where I give training personally because I have learned a lot. A person from 
Assam or Manipur or Nagaland can't go to Europe and visit a farm and learn. But I got the opportunity for some reason and we are trying to uh, kind of implement those best practices here and also teach to the other uh, farmers to do it. Because there's so much of demand supply mismatch, the ecosystem just we can't create the ecosystem. Agriculture is a sector where one farmer cannot create an ecosystem. We would need thousands of farmers if piggery has to become a sector or an industry, like the poultry, like the dairy. So that's why we are giving training, we are sharing our knowledge with a lot of farmers, and I'm quite a rock star as a pig farmer. <laughs> Ah, monetization, of course, like, uh, for us, it's, it doesn't matter. But uh, since many of you would look at technology startups, please do look at this. What is monetization? You know? Most of the technology startups, they struggle with monetizing their product or services. It's very easy to give things free. But at some point of time, you have to monetize your venture so that you can sustain. Okay, you cannot be perpetually in loss and taking money from the venture capital and other people and run your business without making money from it. If you follow that model, then you have to be really big like Facebook or WhatsApp or YouTube where, you know, you have millions of subscribers where you make enough money through ad and other things. Otherwise, if you're looking at a limited user tech startup, please try to Look at the model, what you will follow to monetize your product. I think that's very important for the technology startup because it doesn't cost anything to create such a startup. Scaling. Uh, actually, scaling far can feel better than me <laughs> and myself struggling. I, like, we are at this stage where we need to scale. People are ready to give me money, you know. Uh, in fact, my, uh, the, uh, the first investor, they have already decided they would invest in my next year round, you know. They have earmarked money for me for uh, kind of diversifying a little bit and going, moving towards the, uh, up in the value chain. But scaling is a really big challenge. You're, you have done your pilot, you have been successful, you have started getting uh, traction, customers have started coming, but when it uh, needs to scale up, that's where you feel, face a lot of problem. And, I think there you need people like Fahd and uh, experienced people on the board and uh, angels uh, who can help you to scale. Because scaling, you will have more customers to deal with, you have more manpower to deal with, you have more geography to deal with, you have more uh, delivery channels to deal with. So scaling is something most of the entrepreneurs do struggle and many falter at that stage. Many just remain where they are, they just cannot go. Uh, you know, uh, many people have very good ideas. Some go up like this and some remain where they have started five, ten years because I think they cannot handle that scaling part well. Ah, exit already. So many people have talked about exit. I'm not the right person to talk about exit. But one thing I would like to say when, uh, like, the difference between a, a funded venture and a traditional family-based venture is that as a, you know, uh, entrepreneur, you are also ready to give away some ownership to others. Okay, when people will come as a venture capital equity investment. So you should be ready to give away some part of your ownership to others and you have to be mentally prepared, you know, because it's like your baby. So it, it's really difficult to give, give away part of it. But still, if you want to grow, that is something that you have to think how you want to grow and, and see what is uh, uh, for you, uh, which is more beneficial, giving away a little bit of stake or holding into 100% stake and not growing. So that is a decision I think every entrepreneur has to make. And uh, I, I won't say this is correct or that is correct. It depends on the individual. Failure. I think, uh, the problem with us is that society as a whole, or even I blame it to an extent to our education system as far as I said. That's why he's so successful. See, he was smart enough to drop out from college when he was 18. And now we read about these big people, you know, 
uh, that they, most of them, they dropped out from Harvard and Stanford, and people are now thinking about dropping out and doing something that they want to do. But our society as a whole, we do not encourage risk taking. I think one of the things which is holding us back is, you know, we are, as a society, do not encourage risk taking, and our in, uh, education system does not teach that. And also, we want to be success, like successful, you know, failure is not acceptable. Right from when you are in the school, you are pushed to excel in your, you know, academics, you have to kind of, there's no question of failure. But I think as an entrepreneur, you have to be prepared to fail. And somebody rightly said, failure is not a failure until you give up, you know, until, until you give up, you don't try to rise again. I think. As an entrepreneur, you should take failure as a learning and try to learn from that failure and take it to the next level. You know? Another thing that I just wanted to share is then uh, with that I'll conclude my uh, you know, sharing of my story. Market outside because the consumption pattern is almost similar. So um, I, I, I see there's a lot of potential for the sector and we are working for it. Uh, and we have also formed an organization called Northeast Progressive Peak Farmers Association where I'm the founding president. And so we are working with a lot of farmers as well, apart from my own venture. Because I believe that uh, agriculture cannot be done uh, by one or two individuals. It has to be a collaborative, collective effort. Uh, with this, I'll conclude my space. And thank you so much, Fisher, Nixon, and all the uh, you know, Impal and gels, and I, I want you know Manipur to become like in sports today. You know, Manipur is a state you know where we have produced so many good sports person, and I think in this also Impal and today's day I think would be a, you know landmark day because it can make Manipur a state which is living in startup movement. And with this, and another good thing that I observed personally was that they didn't invite anyone from the government as a chief guest because I knew that would have spoiled my two hours. So I see a very bright future for the chapter, and I wish them all the luck. And thank you so much for inviting me.